So it's time to do an oil change on the Sonics. I've got the Jabiru 3300 engine. I run Phillips 66. I run the 2050 XC oil in here, and that's what Jabiru USA recommends. And what I like to do is I run it 25, 30 hours. I check the condition. If it's starting to get pretty dirty, I just go ahead and change it. You can run it longer. Jabiru says you can run it 30, 40, 50 hours, depending on the condition. But uh, I, I shoot for 25, 30 hours and go ahead and drain it. The sump only holds three and a half quarts, so uh, the oil gets worked pretty hard. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of sea foam into the oil. This is just something I, I like to do. It uh, helps just scavenge out any of the, the, the debris. There's the oil dipstick, and I'll add about three ounces of sea foam to the oil. So I just like to put a little bit of seafoam right before the oil change, run it for 15, 20, 30 minutes. And that way um, it gets in there and breaks up any of the sludge, anything like that that's in the oil and allows it to drain it out. I don't run seafoam in there all the time. I don't think that's necessary. But a little bit just as a, a pre-oil change lubricant, I think um, helps pull the, the crud out of the sump. All right, so I have decaled the engine and I'm letting it cool off a bit. At this point, I'll just go and do a, a visual inspection. I do that every time I got the cowl off. I'll look around and see if there's any oil streaking or anything that might be chafing or unusual signs underneath the cowling. And then uh, when the oil is cool enough so that I don't burn myself just uh, handling the engine components, usually 10 or 15 minutes is all it takes to cool down enough to, to be comfortable to work on, I will start draining the oil. So I've got my supplies laid out. I've got... Uh, quarts of oil. It'll take three and a half quarts. Like I mentioned, I'm using Phillips XC 2050. Been very happy with this stuff. And as a, a side note, you can get this on special at Oshkosh and Sun and Fun. And if you buy it uh, at least three cases, they will ship it to you for free. And it comes out to about 50 bucks a case. So that's a pretty good deal. That's about, well, normally if you buy it at the at the local FEO or whatever, it's about 75 bucks or you get it off spruce. So 50 bucks a case, free shipping right to your door. Can't beat it. Other supplies, I wear um, latex gloves just to keep my hands a little cleaner. This is the hose that will drain off the oil into my catch can. I have a catch can down there where I will collect the oil. Oil filter. So this is a Fram uh, Ultra Synthetic. They call this the, um, the Ultra Guard. If you look on their website, um, it's a little misleading because the package, uh, or I'm sorry, this is the Fram um, X Extra Guard, the XG. Uh, the packaging doesn't say that, but the website and, and their models and all that, that's what they call it. So this is the XG4967. You can get this off Amazon, and most Walmarts actually carry this in their parts department. This is a, um, it's an extended interval, it talks about 15,000 mile extended interval oil change uh, filter. But what I really like about it is it has a thick wall thicker than the standard recommended Jabiru filters. The, the Ryko, the, the Napa Gold um, filter that Jabiru USA likes to use, uh, a regular Fram. This has a thicker case. It has a dual media filter element, which almost feels like cotton. It, it has definitely, it's not just like your cardboard filter that you get in a, in a cheap oil filter. And in, it doesn't have a screen in it like some of the other uh, top tier oil filters like uh, mobile one uh, royal purple those are good filters they seem to work good they have good thick cases uh, they're twice as much as these um, but that screen makes it impossible to cut the filter media out and really inspect it so good for a car bad for us where we want to really cut the filter media out and take a look so i recommend these they're about eight bucks um, and i've been really really happy i've tested about eight or maybe ten different oil filters over the life of my engine i really like these has this little knurled edge to, to grab onto it. 
um, I'll have to just it comes pre lubed on the o-ring you can't really see it but there is a sheen of like a lubricant on there and I usually put just a little bit of DC4 on there to to finish lubing it up I have my oil change pliers to grab the old filter and um, I have my sample bottle for my oil analysis the kits I get come from aircraft spruce you can see it there, it's uh, part number 08-00436. They're from AOA, uh, Aircraft Oil Analysis. Comes with a prepaid envelope. Takes about three bucks in postage. You can mail it at the post office. It's not considered hazardous. And they have a letter on their website that explains all that. I just take it in, answer no to the hazardous question, and it's good to go. So this is the, fill, the uh, form you fill out, and it has all your biographical information up top, and you know, name and all that stuff. And then it has the sample engine serial number. <coughs> it has the um, the time on the oil, hours on oil, oil added, brand and type. And then a spot over here for any kind of notes. So if you had something you wanted to talk about, you could you could put it in there. These guys do a really good job. Usually get back to you in just a day or two. I'll fill that out after I collect that sample. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my hose just got some towel stuffed in there so it doesn't drip I'm gonna hook up my hose to the quick drain right here and it just presses over and uh, I haven't activated that quick drain I will here momentarily and then I position my catch bottle underneath here That's just black rubber hose from the auto parts store. I just position it. Keep my oil pan handy for the filter and all that. And then it's just as easy as making sure that it's going down inside there. And uh, and then this is a, uh, a quick release. So you push it up and twist and it locks on and the oil is coming out. Okay. So, we talk about doing a clean catch, which is to drain some oil off, blow out any dirt oil, anything that might be hanging out right in the bottom of the sump, or, um, you know, anything like that. And then catch it midstream. So, I get set up here, I have my oil bottle open and ready to go. I position the hose so it's right at the very edge here. Let me turn this on. And that's pretty much it. Can see i got just a little bit on the edge when i filled it but that's fine i'll wipe that off and let that continue draining okay so that's capped up Oh, I forgot to put my gloves on. Well, oh well, my hands are still pretty clean. All right, so I'll just position this so it can't come off. And that'll take maybe, I don't know, five or ten minutes to, to drain off. In the meantime, I'm going to get ready to take off that filter. So, stand by. All right, so the oil is still draining. It's been going for just a couple minutes while I got set up for this next thing. So what I do here is I use this. This is just a, an oil filter wrench. Um, I don't like those those cup ones because there's not a lot of room here by the head. And likewise, a, uh, a strap wrench doesn't fit on here real well. But this thing just grabs it and, and uh, gets a good bite and um, turns this right off. So let me take this off.
So once you get it broken loose, uh, you know, half a turn or so, it will turn off on its own. And this, I actually do need my, my gloves. Stand by. All right, so I got my gloves on and I've got a um, another blue shop towel. And what I'm gonna do is, there's always a few drips that come out of the filter right here. Hope I can hear it gurgling. So we're about empty on, on the sump. So I'm going to tuck this in here behind the, the fittings because that's where it does. It runs down the side of the case and then kind of makes a mess down here. So I'm going to tuck this in behind and create just a, like a bit of a curtain. There we go. All right, so I'm ready to remove it and that way when it drips down here, it has somewhere to go. I'll just kind of tuck these guys in. All right. So. So. I'm just going to unscrew this. Yeah, let's see. And that's why I position the drip pan right next to it. And that caught most everything. See how it kind of... If I had let the filter drain just a little bit longer or uh, punctured it and drained it off, uh, none of this would have happened. But I'm just going straight from sump, you know, basically straight from shutdown to drain the sump. All that. So it was still pretty full when I took it off. Okay, so this will just kind of weep and gurgle here for a minute. Had a couple of little splatters over here. Just wipe that down. And then the filter. You can see the filter is going to drain out a bit. I just set it on that shop towel to grab the oil in it. I've tried puncturing filters and draining them off, and that works okay. Um, but it's not a big deal if you just pull it off and wipe up the few drips that you get. And then you can see this thing will continue to just sort of weep a little bit as the oil galleys themselves drain out. So I'll just leave that there for a minute. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I let the oil cooler adapter finish dripping. I pulled out the, the towels and just wiped down. There's a little bit of drips here, you know, like that little drip right there. Just wipe this down. It's minor. There's the rags I pulled out. You can see it caught a little bit, but it's not too bad. I got the oil filter continuing to drain. I have the new one done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this home and cut it open. And I don't want this thing to get all nasty and so it's mostly drained. It'll, there's a lot left in there, but it's not, the rest isn't going to really leak out too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encapsulate it in this glove so it doesn't leak on me. So I'm going to grab the open end in my glove. And then just turn my glove inside out on top of it. Just like that. And now that thing is protected. Turn it over. I can even tie that in a little knot. Anything that, that comes out will get stuck in the glove itself. I've, I've lubed up the O-ring. And I'm just going to thread this guy on. And I'm going to do it as tight as I can do it with my hands. My hands a little slippery just because I was wearing that glove a second ago. So I just gotta dry my hand off. And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn it as tight as I can get it. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. <clears throat> there we go. That's both hands, that's as tight as I can get it. And uh, after an hour, I'll just check it and make sure it hasn't moved. Or, But if I do it like that, um, I, I can't tighten it anymore, so I can always try it again. Let's see if I can get any more out of it. 
<clears throat> yeah, just a touch. So that's it. And uh, there's my hose. There's just a trickle coming out. Most of that is just draining out of the tube at this point. So I will release, release the quick drain. And I'll let that hose continue to, to drip out. I'll just wipe out the excess from the quick drain right here. And in another five minutes or so, that thing will be drained out or I'll cap it with those towels. And that'll be done. The last thing I'll do is I'll just refill it. Pull my dipstick out. And then I'll start refilling. All right, so we're just about done here. Let's see the, uh, I'll put the right back in the box. It's all bundled up. It's not gonna leak, it won't fall over in the car. Got the hose. And I'm just going to cap that off. And then we'll just do a final inspection, make sure everything's closed up, filters on tight. Dip sticks back in. That's it.